things that you can do to reduce your oxalate um, absorption. We don't need oxalate. How would you know if you've got an oxalate issue? Eating adequate calcium. What are oxalates? Reduce the risk of cyst growth. What do oxalates do? Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Kidney Coach YouTube channel. I'm joined again today by the beautiful Lindsay Zerka from the Kidney Nutritional Institute. So, Lindsay, thank you so much for joining me again. I really always appreciate you being on here and your wisdom and your time. So thank you. Thanks for having me back. Happy to be here. Yeah, that's awesome. So oxalates, let's just dive straight in. So what are oxalates and why should people with kidney disease even know what this word means? Yes. So oxalates, is, they are a substance that are found in plants and in plants, they serve a really uh, helpful purpose. They help regulate minerals and help protect against external um, uh, issues that uh, could harm the plant. And, um, but for humans, it's considered a non-nutrient. Uh, we don't need oxalates um, and they just happen to be in a lot of plant foods that we eat. And so um, for kidney disease, we like to pay attention to them because um, certain conditions can arise that can make people um, higher risk for absorbing more oxalates and that can increase your risk of kidney stones. And then we've also found that for people who have PKD, that um, reducing um, oxalate intake may help to reduce the risk of cyst growth, but also we've noticed a lot of different type of symptom improvement, like flank pain and, and joint pain and things like that. Amazing. So what do oxalates do? So obviously, they're in, I think we call them an anti-nutrient, right? Because they're mm -hmm. really for plants and not for humans. So yes. tell me, what do oxalates do and how do they interact with the body that makes them potentially detrimental? And why do some people handle them fine and other people don't? Yeah. So when you eat a plant that has oxalates in it, um, the food will be broken down in the gut and the oxalates are released from the plants. And in the gut, um, some oxalates might bind with certain minerals like calcium. And um, that means that people aren't going to absorb those bound oxalates very well. So they'll pass out through the stool. But free oxalates are absorbed and then they're removed through the kidneys, um, through the urine. And sometimes people can be more prone to absorbing oxalates um, if they have some gut issues. Uh, one of the biggest ones is if you aren't digesting your fat very well. And this can happen if you've had your gallbladder taken out, or sometimes if you've even had um, your own medications or other things that reduce your stomach acid, that will reduce the amount of um, enzymes to help break down your fat. Um, and what happens then is if you have all this extra fat, um, that isn't being broken down, then it will actually bind up the calcium. And so the calcium isn't really free to help bind up those oxalates. Um, this can also happen if you've had um, any type of uh, GI surgery, like for weight loss, uh, like gastric bypass, mm -hmm. things like that. How would you know if you've got an oxalate issue? What are the sort of things if I'm thinking, okay, right, I've got, maybe I've got some PKD, are oxalates an issue for me? How would I know? So um, it is always a good idea to talk with your healthcare provider and ask them about it. Um, but for PKD, there's definitely some good research um, showing that um, an oxalate managed diet um, can help reduce the risk of cyst growth because when um, oxalates are absorbed, um, when they're in the body, they can bind with other minerals and they can form crystals. And mm -hmm. if this happens in the kidney, this can form kidney stones that normally the tubules, um, they will, the tubules in your kidneys will have to expand to let those kidney stones through. And for people with PKD, they found that um, these tubules expanding activates a, a process um, that uh, leads to continuous tubule dilation. It uh, increases that risk of cyst growth. Um, and so for PKD, you may not exactly have symptoms. It's just something that's coming up in the literature is a, is a strong correlation, but some people have found that, um, if they, um, have a more oxalate managed diet, they don't have as much flank pain. They don't have as much joint pain. They overall feel better because those oxalates just seem to be wreaking some havoc in their system. Other people might think they might need to manage their oxalates 
if they have had previous kidney stones that were calcium oxalate kidney stones. And then, um, or, you know, potentially if you have a family history of kidney stones and you have other risk factors for developing kidney stones, it might be worth something considering. And then if you just, um, if you have some gut issues, like if you've had your gallbladder taken out, if you've had, you know, GI surgery, um, or if you notice that maybe you have kind of funky looking stools, it's something good to talk with your doctor about and say, Hey, is this like, am I digesting my foods really well? Is there a problem here? Um, those kind of things would be things that would make you think maybe you should consider uh, looking at an oxalate managed diet. Okay. And you just mentioned there are other things that you can do to reduce your oxalate um, absorption. What are those sort of things? Yes. So one of the things is uh, eating adequate calcium. So sometimes we'll have our clients track their intakes. So we can kind of see where their calcium intake is light, especially mm -hmm. with kidney disease. We don't want to make sure we want to make sure people don't go overboard on the calcium either. So that's why we have them track and we can kind of see where their intake is at. And if it's about at their estimated needs, then we're good to go. But if they're lower, then we can recommend um, adding some higher calcium foods or maybe occasionally um, like a calcium citrate supplement. And if you are adding in those higher calcium foods or a calcium citrate supplement, it's really nice to pair those with higher oxalate foods. Because remember at the beginning, if you are um, eating calcium with oxalate foods in the gut, the calcium will bind to the oxalate so that it won't be absorbed. Um, and so that's a really nice way to still keep your diet pretty liberal and not have to, you know, micromanage your oxalates. Um, so that's a really helpful piece. And then the other thing is to make sure that you're um, always staying pretty hydrated. Um, that way the urine doesn't get too concentrated. That reduces that risk of crystal formation. And then um, you can also include sources of citrate, which helps keep your urine at a, a better pH. Again, reducing that risk of kidney stone. Mm -hmm. um, and sources of citrate could be um, like adding lemon or lime juice to your drinking water, using it in salad dressings or like lemon or lime ice cubes. Um, and then of course, like a calcium citrate, magnesium citrate, depending on what your other nutrition needs are. Lindsay, thank you as always for your expertise and time and knowledge. I really appreciate it and exactly how you put things forward for people to understand nice and easily. It's always greatly appreciated. If you have decided that you absolutely have an oxalate issue and you would like to work with a practitioner, you can head over to the Kidney Nutritional Institute and click on About Us and Practitioners and you'll find all of Lindsay's details there. I'll put that in the show notes below. If you want to know more about what we do, head to www.kidneycoach.com. And if you want to be informed every time we put out a video, make sure you hit subscribe. And if you have any comments or you'd like Lindsay or me to interview anyone on any specific areas, make sure you leave some comments below and I will get back to you. Hey, Lindsay, thanks again. Always appreciate it. And I'm sure we'll get you back on again. I think we need to, there's a few more things I want to pick your brains about. So we'll have to do that. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me, Fiona. It's always great to chat with you. Yeah, you too. All right. You enjoy the rest of your evening. And again, thanks for being part of our community. We will see you next time. Bye.